It has been a hot minute since I did one of these, but here we are. Hey everyone, it's Jenny, and welcome back to my channel. This story ain't over. So today I am coming to you with a video that I've been wanting to do for the longest time, but I just, you know, didn't have the chance to, be also because I wasn't really reading that much. But in the past couple months, I have read a number of books and they've kind of accumulated now and I'm very proud of myself for getting to this point. But I'm gonna be doing a recent reads wrap up video for you today. These are all the books that I read I think in October, in September, some of these are from August, like we are going way back because I apparently haven't done a a wrap up in a while so yeah in general I feel like my reading experience as I said in my reading slump video it hasn't been the greatest but the last two on this like wrap up were probably my favorite and I had the most fun and they were also the most recent ones that I read but the other ones were still great as well I just wasn't in the mood to enjoy them as much but they were still relatively good but yes here we are. So the first book I want to talk about is House of Salt and Sorrows by Erin A. Craig. So this is the Owl Crate exclusive edition that I got in the box. I was so excited to read this. It wasn't really on my radar until I got it in the box and I was just so astounded by how much I really enjoyed this when I started reading it. I just kind of got sucked into the story which was not something I expected but basically this book takes place in like this fictional fantasy world where there's this kingdom by the sea with um these 12 princesses I guess not really princesses but like noble women and they're slowly dying off because of a curse and there's like a bit of mythology and everything but yes I went into this knowing that it was kind of a vague retelling of 12 dancing princesses which I absolutely love I love that fairy tale I love the Barbie movie version of it so I was really excited going into this but I didn't expect this to be as creepy as it was and it actually really works as like a Halloween spooky read there are some really creepy parts to this book like there are ghosts um there's like some really unexpected twists in this as well and there's also a lot of like mystery to most of this book so that was one of the things that i loved the most about this book it was like unexpected i also pretty much enjoyed the writing style as well the only thing i didn't really like about this book was towards the end it was just so many different twists and things getting revealed and so at some point i started to get confused but uh, it might also have been because I was listening to the audiobook for most of this, I feel like. I started reading it physically at first, and then I moved on to the audiobook. But it did take me a while to finish it, only because I think I stopped reading at some point, and then I picked it up afterwards, after like a week or so. So it took me a little bit longer, but I kind of flew through the beginning of the book, the first like... I would say 60% of the book I flew through. So overall, I really enjoyed this. I think I have a Goodreads rating up, but I am gonna take that down because I am taking, I'm trying to get rid of all of my star ratings and just talk about the books as I like them or what I thought of them, but yes. Overall, this was really great, really eerie. Um, definitely recommend if you wanted like a kind of spooky, creepy book. And this also has like a lot of death in it. There's a lot of characters who die. There's a lot of like grief as well. Grief is a really big kind of theme in this book. But overall, I thought it was a pretty enjoyable read. So definitely recommend. All right, the next two books I have here were my rereads. And these are the ones that I made a bunch of buzz about and I didn't end up reading as quickly as I wanted to. But they are the Legend series by Marie Lu. So Legend, Prodigy, Champion. I do have a full book talk for Legend. I was gonna do a full book talk for Prodigy and Champion but I didn't feel like I really wanted to or had my like thoughts coherently together to do a full review on each of them but overall I really really loved my reread of this like I did wish I could have read them a little bit quicker so I could have read them in time for Rebel so that I would have been as excited for Rebel but as I said in my reading slump video I was just kind of in a slump and I just wasn't really in the mood to read in general but I really enjoyed rereading the series and coming back to it. The last time I read this was I think about five years ago, four to five years ago and it's just been so long and I forgot a lot of things that happened especially in the second and third book because I knew basically like everything that happened in the first book which was great but the second and third book like I couldn't really remember like half the things that happened so as they were coming up I was like oh my god oh my god oh my god and I was like really actually surprised and that was really really great another thing I loved was returning to the characters I like forgot how much I love the characters seeing them go through like everything like June and day like how much I root for them I just oh my god they like tug at my heartstrings and I think overall out of the three I 
like I still like champion the best I remember out of the three reading them it, champion took me the longest to read both times first and second time around but it still continues to be my favorite out of the three I think just because like the relationships have developed more and like there's more at stake and I just really enjoyed it overall I know for a lot of people champions actually their least favorite but to me I just like it a lot I also feel like legends really great as well I originally didn't like Prodigy as much but this time around I really did enjoy it but I did forget a lot of things that happened in Prodigy and so it was nice kind of getting a refresher on them and I was like oh my god all this happened and there's also a lot more world building in Prodigy than I remembered and so that was really great and like just learning more about the Republic and everything I think I'm currently reading Rebel and I think my issue with it even though I'm really enjoying it and I love like seeing the characters again and everything I think my issue with it is that it takes place mainly in Antarctica whereas I wish it took place in the Republic Public, which if you've read the series you would know but yeah, I'm trying not to spoil anything but yes overall really really love this still cried at the end of this which you know I just love bittersweet endings apparently so yeah really really love this series and definitely recommend like it continues to be one of my favorites favorite series like I still gave each one of these books five stars because I still love them so so much so yeah I don't have much more to say on that front I do recommend it if you haven't read them before they're great all right the next book that I want to talk about is another book that I got in the owl crate box and that is the bone houses by Emily Lloyd Jones so I got this in the September owl crate box it was the fear of the night box which was like really good for the theme and for October it was a very nice and spooky book it had like you know dead rising and a grave digger as a main character and you know I really liked the relationship between these siblings in the book as well but overall I feel like I like this book but I didn't like love it I do recommend it though if you wanted like a spooky Halloweeny ish book and one that kind of has a lot of like mythology to it this one kind of leans heavily on the mythology aspect I think overall I liked it but I didn't like love it love it it wasn't like my favorite book on the planet but I still really enjoyed it and aside from that I don't feel like I have a lot to say about it I and one thing that did kind of irk me about this is the way that I felt like there was a bunch of info dumping. I don't know if it was just like the mood I was in because this is also, I read this during my reading slump, but I felt like there were parts where like you would just get a bunch of information that could have been more naturally incorporated. That was just my feeling, but maybe other people felt differently. Overall, it was good if you wanted like a spooky um, book it basically follows her main character Rin who is a grave digger and her family owns like a grave digging business but when there's like this thing happening where the dead are rising and when they rise they're called the bone houses so when the dead start rising and like there's no other way to kind of stop them from rising other than burning them the grave digging business isn't as you know feasible I guess people are starting to burn their dead instead of bury them so Rin's family is kind of struggling and then the stranger comes to town from the prince's castle looking to go into the forests and like mountains on the edge of town and he wants to explore it to learn some kind of secret and I don't want to really spoil anything and so he kind of enlists Ren's help to guide him through the forest because she knows it really well and she starts to learn some things as well and she's trying to find someone as well and things kind of snowball from there there's also some really creepy like parts to this book where like the dead like kind of come out and attack and Rin is like super awesome and fights them off and those were great as well so absolutely enjoyed those parts so definitely recommend if you want kind of zombies there's also a really great goat character in this book which I absolutely love the goat was the best part honestly like my favorite part of the book was the goat came for the dead stayed for the goat. All right, the next book that I finished was another spooky, creepy, zombie-ish book, and that was Dread Nation by Justina Ireland. This book I loved so much. Like, I really, really enjoyed this. Like, it's not my favorite book, but it, I still really enjoyed it, and I'm looking forward to, like, the next book in the series because I feel like there is supposed to be a sequel. But on its own, it is really great. But the thing that surprised me and was kind of unexpected and that I loved the most about it was that it's really funny and really kind of rompy and, like, hilarious and ridiculous at some points but it's also dealing with like super heavy subject matter like there's a lot of talk about race and about sexism and like slavery is a really big topic and like all of this is going on but there's also like some really funny parts to this and I just really really enjoyed it this book takes place after the American Civil War and the American Civil War was kind of like cut short by the rise of the dead and so they've risen up and they kind of um, became a huge problem and so all these states kind of like had to deal with that problem rather than fight with each other and after the like war with the dead there was this act put in place which forced um, black and indigenous people to become these kind of attendants to wealthy white people and kind of protect them from the 
dead and so they were put in these schools taken off plantations and everything put in these schools to train to fight the zombies which are called shamblers in the book and so in the book the main character Jane McKean is kind of attending one of these kind of prep schools I guess to learn to become an attendant and it's like the specific one for like you know girls and everything and like she has other classmates that she doesn't get along with and there's like kind of like a mean girl character in this book that I absolutely loved because she and Jane kind of end up forming this begrudging friendship which I absolutely loved I love that trope of like you know the mean girl becoming the friend but yeah that was great but although the book starts off in the school it does kind of shift towards like another location there's a little bit of travel as well and some really crazy interesting things happen and there's also like a little scientist character who is adorable and like I really just enjoyed all the characters in this book and also just Jane's kind of fierceness she was amazing there's also some really amazing scenes of her fighting shamblers off and she's just so awesome and I love that but in general this is just great it had a cute little romance as well and just so many so many great discussions about race as well and I love that and the way it was discuss was kind of in this funny hilarious but also very serious way you know Jane is kind of just making these remarks is like um you know these very blatantly racist things that happened like back then um because it is like a historical book and so she's just making these comments like in her head about all these things these white people are saying and it's just hilarious like her internal dialogue or monologue was just amazing so yeah overall love this book it was so great so funny I think that was like the best part about it and I'm definitely looking forward to reading the next book as well so yeah definitely recommend if you wanted like kind of a like spooky book that isn't too spooky and one that's like kind of funny great one okay and the last two books on this recent reads were the ones that took me the longest to read because I started them quite a while ago I had like arc copies and then I never got around to finishing them but I finally finished them and I'm so proud of myself and I kind of just finished them in a kind of weird stupor and I think I'm finally getting out of my reading slump but the first of those two books is Permanent Record by Mary H.K. Choi. I was intending to go to her event in Toronto, so that's why I was like rushing to finish this, but I ended up getting sick and so I didn't end up going, which was unfortunate and I really wish I could have gone, but I did end up finishing the book, which was so great because I was sick and so I kind of just sat around and listened to the audiobook and it was honestly so great. This book is different from what I went into it, like thinking it was. I had read the synopsis and I thought it was more of like a like Sun is also a star, kind of they both die at the end, that kind of vibe, like a romance over like a very short period of time, but it actually takes place over a longer period of time, I'd say maybe six months or something. And it's also only told from one POV, which is the male POV, which I did not expect because you don't get a lot of YA books from male point of views, like exclusively from the male point of view. But it follows our main character, Pablo Rind, who is multiracial. He is half Korean and half, I think, Pakistani. And he's kind of dealing with these identity issues, but he's also dealing with the pressure of having to know what you want to do with your life so early because he is young. I think he's supposed to be in like his first or second year of university, but he dropped out because he couldn't afford the school he was going to he was going to NYU but he also didn't know what he wanted to do with his life so he's working at this bodega in New York at nights and he ends up in the situation where this kind of um, influencer youtuber singer named Deliana Smart kind of walks into a store and they end up meeting and there's a bit of this whirlwind romance that kind of happens but a lot of the book is really focused on Pablo and his internal journey and struggle and it really kind of talks about you know social media influence and also really discusses like how we expect young people to really know what they want with their life so early on and how it's difficult for a lot of people and Pablo is kind of in that situation he needs like a kick in the butt to really do what he wants to do and commit you know he really wants like an easy fix but he has to kind of learn the lesson that he has to work for what he wants and I thought that was just really interesting and you don't get a lot of stories like that I feel like I, or I, at least I haven't read a lot like that so it was very unique and very interesting and weird the romance is very interesting and weird it is more on the older end of YA it definitely doesn't have like the very innocent um, everything's rosy look that some YA does. It's definitely more on like the cynical side as well. It's also dealing with like different issues. You know, he's supposed to be in college, but he ends up working. And so he's in a different kind of situation. There's none of this like high school stuff. So it was different in that way. And I really, really enjoyed that. And it's closer to the stage in life that I'm in right now because I'm not in high school anymore, obviously. So that was just really, really nice. So overall, I just really, really enjoyed this. It was like a quick read. Audiobook's great if you were thinking of picking it up. And the characters were all just really vibrant and interesting. He has a bunch of like roommates as well who get involved. And there's one roommate in particular 
Taylor who like, kind of gives him a kick in the butt uh, towards the end of the book and I absolutely loved him but there's also some really rich descriptions of like New York and the vibe of New York and like the people in New York but also of his parents and like the different sides of his family and the way that they are the different cultures that he comes from like I loved seeing that representation but also just like the way that like Mary H.K. Choi writes is very like distinct and unique and she uses a lot of pop culture references and like a lot of like you know location based references and I just love that it was very like rooted in New York and I love that so yeah overall really great I feel like it is it might be a hit or miss for some people it is a very kind of distinct kind of book but I really really enjoyed it so definitely recommend all right, and the last book that I want to talk about and the last one that I just finished a couple days ago and absolutely loved so, so much is Ninth House by Lee Barduco. Okay, so I want to talk about this a little bit. I was super, super excited about this. And when I got it, I was like even more excited. And I, I got an advanced reader copy and I was so, so excited. And I was like, I get to read this and everything. And then I started it. And I will say that going into this book, it was a lot slower than I expected and like the first hundred pages I kind of had to slog through because there's just so much information a lot of description and like you know there's like tangents about like Yale and like New Haven and the atmosphere of the place and I felt like I was slightly confused but as soon as I got like into it into it like 150 pages to 200 pages like that point it got so good like the murder mystery kind of picks up and you know you're really getting to know Alex as well and you're getting used to there's like three timelines in this book so you're getting used to like that format and then you were just looking forward to everything that's happening and honestly this book was just so incredible like I loved Lee's writing in this book like I don't feel like I liked it that much in the first hundred pages but like after that it got really good there was just so many lines that I loved as well I did an Instagram post of this as well so like I talk about it a little bit there but I just really really love this and it was so creepy and it was just so great for Halloween as well and I understand why a lot of people like had mixed feelings about this and I feel like for me the rest of the book made up for how slow I it felt at the beginning and how much I wasn't enjoying it at the beginning like the rest of the book really made up for it and I felt like the book took a different direction than I was expecting like I expected it to be kind of a fun um, creepy, uh, you know, more Six of Crows-ish vibe, um, but also more Buffy vibe to like a university story, you know, I was expecting it more to be like that, more fun, I guess, and more romancy. but this was just so much different, and it was so angry, and creepy, and just crazy as well, there's so many twists and turns, especially towards the end, and like, you're following this murder mystery, and it is very, like, adult. I feel like the tone of this book is a lot more adult. It doesn't have the rosy lens that YA often does. It's pretty cynical, but it's also pretty funny, but it's also very harrowing and, you know, intense at some points. There's some really graphic scenes in this book as well, so like definitely not for YA. Like I understand why Lee was really pushing this as an adult book because, you know, it gets pretty graphic and I understand that a lot of, you know, young people and teens will still be able to read this like maturely but you know it's not for like a 13 year old I don't feel like because it does also have a lot of triggers for sexual harassment and sexual assault and rape and that kind of thing so you know be careful of this going into it but I felt like it dealt with those subjects really well and really treated these subjects as humans and really kind of delved into the psychosis and the you know privilege and foolish nature of you know men in power it really kind of examines that there's this really interesting look into these privileged kids in Yale who are running these secret societies who have all this power and all of this wealth at their fingertips and they are using it for such horrible you know shallow reasons and it's just very very interesting and I you know wasn't really into it at the beginning but as you get into the book and as you're kind of learning about more of the characters because there's a ton of characters in this book as well I feel like as you get to know them more you are more invested in it and I also got way more invested in Alex's character herself as the book went along because she does have like this backstory that stays mysterious for like most of the first half of the book and then as soon as you kind of hear the backstory and you kind of get to know her a bit more I felt like I was way more invested and I cared so much about her and I wanted her to succeed and a big theme of this book was kind of survival and Alex is just trying to survive and one of the interesting things about this is that like the way that magic works in this book it's looked at as a commodity and the way that the secret societies use it is like it's a commodity like it's something to be taken and bought and sold and that kind of thing but it's also a very frightening thing but also a very fascinating thing to Alex who has seen ghosts all 
her life and has at some points been assaulted by them has at some points been unable to you know um be normal or have a normal life because of that and so she turned to drugs and things to dull the pain and that was just a really interesting part of the book and at first like I wasn't really into it but as the book progressed I really started to understand her and why she was the way she was and I just really really enjoyed this book and like it just hit me deep in the heart by towards the end and I just ugh, like it's not a super happy hopeful book but it's a crazy end but it does leave you with a bit of hope and you know you're seeing Alex have this whole crazy journey throughout the book but it's also a very angry journey she is very frustrated with the way things are and she is trying to survive and at the beginning of the book she thinks that the way to survive is like you know acting a certain way and trying to just fit into this society of Yale but later on like halfway through the book she starts to realize that no this isn't the way to do it and she starts acting more herself and I think that that's when I really really started to enjoy the book and it was just so great so yeah that was a really rambly kind of review of my thoughts on this book like I just ugh, I can't even explain how much I enjoyed it especially like towards the end. I will say without like a doubt that I wasn't enjoying it in like the first like 100 pages. Like I liked the writing but like I just wasn't really invested in the story but as soon as it like hit that 150 mark to 200 it was just amazing and I just loved the rest and I loved the magic system and I loved everything. There was just so much I loved and it just gets really intense and it also is very more adult so I think I enjoyed that to the sense that like it wasn't so rosy and easy the way that some YA is sometimes. So yes, I really really enjoyed this and definitely recommend as long as you're aware of the triggers and everything. Yeah, it was great and I'm like dying for the second book like I need the second book like now because that ending yeah I went into this thinking that there was gonna be more of a romance in it and there honestly wasn't that much and um I think that's something you need to know going into it so that you don't have false expectations because I feel like I went into it thinking that there was gonna be a strong romance and there isn't there's tastes of it there's like little bits of it and like they were enough to kind of string me along and I'm very excited to see where it goes in the second book but yeah, that was also a thing. But yes, overall, really, really enjoyed this and definitely recommend just be aware of the, you know, triggers and everything. Really, really great and just such a masterpiece. Like, I think it was just done so, so well. And I loved that she decided to take this direction with the story. I was listening to her podcast episode with the first draft with Sarah Annie, and she was saying how there is a different version of Nantes that she could have written, the fun, you know, YA version. And it wasn't the one that she wanted to write. And I am so glad that she didn't write that version because I think this story has so many merits and so many good things about it. But those were all of the books that I read in the past few months. I really hope you enjoyed this video and that you liked hearing my thoughts about these books. I definitely wasn't a slump for most of the books that I was reading in this wrap up but towards the end for the last two I felt a lot better and I really really enjoyed them and I'm feeling way more excited about reading now and I think I'm slowly getting out of the reading slump so that's making me very very happy. So yeah that is about all I have to say. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of these books or if you're planning to read them if you had like similar or different thoughts about these books than I did because I would love to hear all of your thoughts especially about Ninth House I'm kind of curious about what you all thought of it and also permanent record so yeah leave me your thoughts because I'd love to discuss and hear them but that's about all I have to say so thank you so so much for watching and I will see you in my next video and please remember that this story ain't over bye <laughs>